Hi April Kids, how are you going? As you know, we've been reading through Lion, Witch and the Wardrobe and we're up to chapter 13. So let's see what's happening. This chapter is titled Magic from the Dawn of Time. Now we must get back to Edmund. When he had been made to walk far further than he had ever known and that anybody could walk, the witch at last halted in a dark valley, all overshadowed with fir trees and yew trees. Edmund simply sunk down and lay on his face, face, doing nothing at all and not even caring what was going to happen, next provided they let him still lie down. He was too tired to even notice how hungry and thirsty he was. The witch and the dwarf were talking close beside him in low tones. No, said the dwarf, it is no use now, O queen. They must have reached the stone table by now. Perhaps the wolf will smell us out and bring us news, said the witch. It can't be good news if he does, said the dwarf. Four thrones in care paravel, said the witch. How, um, how if only three were filled? That would not fulfill the prophecy. Okay, let's see. What difference would that make now um, that he has... That he is here, said the dwarf. He did not dare, even now, to mention the name of Aslan to his mi mistress. mistress. Um, he may not stay long, and then we will fall under the three at. We would fall upon the three at Kaur. Yet it might be better, said the dwarf, to keep this one. There he kicked Edmund for bargaining with. Yes, and to have him rescued, said the um, witch scornfully. Then said the dwarf, um, we had better do what we have to do at once. I would like to have it done on the stone table itself, said the witch. It is the proper place, and that is where it has always been done before. It would be a long time now before the stone table um, can again be put to its proper use, said the dwarf. True, said the witch, and then, well, I... Well, I will begin. And at that moment, with a rush and a snarl, a wolf rushed up to them. I have seen them. They are all at the stone table with him. They have killed my captain, Margram, and I hid, I hid in the thickets and saw it all. One of the sons of Adams killed him. Fly, fly. No, said the witch. There will be no flying. Go quickly. Summon all our people to meet me here as speedily as they can. Call out the giants and the werewolves and the spirits of the trees who are on our side. Call the gulls and the bogles, the ogres and the menotters. Um, call the cruels, the hags, the spectres, and the people of the toadstools. Um, we will fight. What? Have I not still my wand? Uh, will not their ranks turn to stone even as they come on? Be off quickly. I have a little thing to finish here while you are away. The great brute bowed his, bowed his head, turned and galloped away. Now, she said, I have no table. Let me see. Um, we had better put it against the trunk of a tree. Wow, this is pretty sad, isn't it? She's like objectifying Edmund right now and saying it instead of him. That's pretty sad. Edmund found himself roughly for forced to his feet. Then the dwarf set him with his back against a tree and bound him fast. He saw the witch take off her outer mantle. Her arms were bare underneath and it was terribly white. Um, because they were so very white, he could see them, but he could not see much else. It was so dark in the valley under the dark trees. Prepare the victim, said the witch. And the dwarf undid um, Edmund's collar and folded it back. Um, the shirt at the neck. Oh gosh. Um, then he took Edmund's hair and put his head so back that he had um, so far back that he had to raise his chin. After that, Edmund heard a strange noise. Whiz. Oh, what's gonna happen now? Whiz, whiz. For that moment, he couldn't think what it was. Then he realized it was the sound of a knife being sharpened. At that very moment, he heard loud shouts from every direction, a drumming of hooves and a beating of wings, a scream from the witch, confusion all around him, and then he found he was being untied. Strong arms were round him, and he heard big, kind voices saying things like, let him lie down, give him some wine, drink this, steady now, you'll be all right in a minute. Then he heard voices of people that were not talking to him, but to one another. They were saying things like, who's got the witch? I thought you had her. I didn't see her after I knocked the knife out of her hand. I was after the dwarf. Um, do you mean to say that she's escaped? A chap can't mind everything at once. What's that? Oh, sorry. It's only an old stump. And at this point, Edmund went off into a dead faint. Well, gosh, I mean, you can understand why. Goodness me. The witch almost... Well, I don't even want to think about what the witch almost did. Um, presently, the centres and the, the unicorns and the deer and the birds, uh, which were, of course, the rescue party, which Aslan had sent in the last chapter, all set off to go back to the stone table, carrying Edmund with them. Um, but if they could have seen what happened in that valley after they had gone, I think they might have been quite surprised. It was perfectly still, and presently um, the moon grew bright. Um, if you had been there, you would have seen the moonlight shining on an old tree stump and on a fair-sized boulder. If you had gone on looking, you would have gradually have begun to think there was something odd about both that stump and boulder. And next, you would have thought that the stump did look remarkably, remarkably like a fat little man crouching on the ground. 
And you, if you had have watched, um, watched long enough, you would have seen the stump walk across to the boulder and the boulder sit up and begin talking to the stump. For in reality, the stump and the boulder were simply the witch and the dwarf. For it was part of her magic that she could make things look like what they aren't, and she had the presence of mind to do so at the very moment that the knife was knocked out of her hand. She had kept hold of her wand, so it had been kept safe too. When the other children woke up the next day... Um, they had been sleeping on piles of cushions in the pavilion. The next thing they heard from Mrs. Beaver was that their brother had been rescued, brought into the camp late last night, and was at that moment with Aslan. Um, as soon as they had breakfasted, they all went out, and they saw Aslan and Edmund walking together in the dewy grass, apart from the rest of the court. There was no need to tell you, and no one ever heard, what Aslan was saying, but it was a conversation which Edmund, Edmund would never forget. Um, as the others drew nearer, Aslan turned to meet them, bringing Edmund with him. Here is your brother, he said, and there is no need to talk to him about what is past. Edmund shook hands with um, each of the others and said to each of them in turn, I'm sorry, and everyone said, that's all right. And then everyone wanted very hard to say something which would make it all clear that they were all friends with him again. Something ordinary and natural, and of course no one could think of anything in the world to say. But before they had time to feel really awkward, one of the leopards approached Aslan and said, Sire, there's a, there is a messenger from the enemy who craves audience. Let him approach, said Aslan. The leopard went away and soon um, returned, leading the witch's dwarf. What is your message, son of Earth? asked Aslan. The Queen of Narnia and Empress of the Lone Islands desires a safe conduct to come and speak with you, said the dwarf, on a matter which is um, as much to your advantage as to hers. Queen of Narnia, indeed, said Mr. Ba um, Badger, of all the cheek. Peace, Badger, said Aslan. All names will soon be restored to their proper owners. In the meantime, we will not dispute, um, dispute about them. Tell your mistress, um, son of earth, that I grant her safe conduct on condition that she leaves her wand behind her at the great oak. Um, this was agreed to, and two leopards went back with the dwarf to see um, that the conditions were properly carried out. But supposing she turns two, two leopards into stone, whispered Lucy to Peter. I think the same idea had occurred to the leopards themselves. At any rate, they walked off. Um, as they walked off, their fur was bristling like a cat when it sees a strange dog. It will be all right, whispered Peter in reply. He wouldn't send them if it weren't. A few minutes later, the witch herself walked out on top of the hill and came straight across and stood before Aslan. The three children who had not seen her um, before felt shudders running down their backs at the sight of her face. And there were now low growls among all the animals present. Though it was bright sunshine, everyone suddenly felt cold. The only two people present who seemed to be quite at their, quite at their ease were Aslan and the witch herself. It was the oddest thing to see these two faces, the golden face and the dead white face, so close together. Not that the witch looked um, Aslan exactly in his eyes. Mrs. Beaver particularly noticed this. You have a traitor there, Aslan, said the witch. Of course, everyone present knew that she meant Edmund. But Edmund had got past thinking about himself after all he'd been through and after the walk he had done that morning. He just went on looking at Aslan. It didn't seem to matter what the witch said. Well, said Aslan, his offence was not against you. Have you forgotten the deep magic? asked um, witch. The witch, let us say I have forgotten it, answered Aslan gravely. Tell us of this deep magic. Tell you, said the witch, her, her voice growing suddenly shriller. Um, tell you what is written on the very table of stone which stands beside us. Tell you what is written in letters deep as a spear, as long um, on the fire stones on the secret hill. Tell you what is engraved on the scepter of the emperor beyond the sea. You at least know that the magic um, which the Emperor put into Narnia at the very beginning. You know that every traitor belongs to me as my lawful prey and that and, and that for every treachery I have a right to kill. Um, I have a right to a kill. Oh, said Mr. Beaver, so that's how you came to imagine yourself a queen because you were the Emperor's hangman. I see. Oh gosh, such cheek. Peace, Badger, said Aslan with a very low growl. And so, continued the witch... Um, that human creature is mine. His life is forfeit to me. His blood is my property. Come and take it, then, said the bull with a man's head with a great 
um, billowing voice. Fool, said the witch with a sa sa savage smile that was almost a snarl. Do you really think your master can rob me of my rights by mere force? He knows the deep magic better than that. He knows that unless I have blood, as the law says, all Narnia will be overturned and perish in fire and water. Um, it is very true, said Aslan. I do not deny it. Oh, Aslan, whispered Susan in the lion's ear. Can't we, I mean, you won't, will you? Can't we do something about the deep magic? Isn't there something you can work against it? Work against the Empress magic, said Aslan, turning to her with something like a frown on his face. And no, and nobody had ever, ever made that suggestion to him again. Um, Edmund was on the other side of Aslan. He looked all the time at Aslan's face. He felt a choking feeling and wondered if he ought to say something. But a moment later, he felt that he, um, what he had not expected to do um, anything but wait and do what he was told. Um, fall back, all of you, said Aslan, and I will talk to the witch alone. They all obeyed. It was a terrible time, this waiting and wondering what the witch and the lion were talking earnestly together uh, about in low voices. Lucy said, oh, Edmund, and began to cry. Um, Peter stood with his back to the others, looking at the distant sea. The beavers stood holding holding each other's paws with their heads bows. The centaurs um, stamped uneasily with their hooves. But everyone became perfectly still in the end, so that you noticed even small sounds like a bumblebee flying past, or the birds in the forest. Um, down below them, um, down below them, or the wind rustling the leaves, and still the talk between Aslan and the White Witch went on. And at last, they heard Aslan's voice. Um, you can call all come back, he said. I have settled the matter. Um, she has renounced the claim to your brother's blood. And over the hill, there was a noise as if everyone had been holding their breath. And now began breathing again. And there was a murmur of talk. The witch was just turning away with a look of fierce joy on her face when she stopped and said, How do I know this promise will be let? Um, kept. Rah! roared Aslan, still rising from his throne, and his great voice open, mouth opened wider and wider, and the roar grew louder and louder. I'm not even going to try, try to attempt what his roar would sound like. It would be amazing. Um, and the witch, after staring um, for a moment with her lips wide apart, picked up her skirts and fairly ran for her life. Okay, so that is the end of chapter 13. Things are getting pretty interesting, so let's let's keep reading. Okay, thanks everyone. Bye!